Hey, welcome to my shop. So today, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try to do, we'll see what really happens, is I'm going to try to align uh, the FM uh, circuits in this radio, starting with the IF, using a more classic approach, uh, still using a sweep uh, generator, that was that sound that you could hear, and uh, relying more on the scope, and just kind of watching on the SDR just you know what is happening. So let's take a look at the scope again. So what you're seeing there is a pretty classic look of a response curve for a tuned circuit with a peak right there. And if you're really sharp eyed you'll see some kind of a wiggle just past this line here. Okay, and that little wiggle has something to do with that number up there, 10.69 6, which is really pretty much 10.7. Mmm, 10.7. Okay, let's just take a look at what we can see on the SDR radio. Okay, and that's what we're seeing on the SDR radio. The red line is right at 10.7. And you can see some kind of a little peak thing happening right in here. And you can kind of see something going on here. In fact, if you look closely, it's actually going on all the way out to here. You can see a little edge right there. So this is the extent of the sweep all the way from here. If you can see it on the waterfall display from this edge all the way over to this edge right here. And what that little tiny peak is, I'm not sure. But you can see it's not at 10.7, it looks to be at, well, I would say 10.75. Perhaps that little peak should be sitting at 10.7. You can also see kind of a curve here, a little bit of a curve. So that's what the SDR is showing. Now if we jump back to the oscilloscope, Doesn't doesn't quite look like that, does it? No. Not quite. Now this little mark here, let me see if I can just get it a little more apparent. And make sure it's in focus. Yeah, tricky when you've got something that looks like it's out of focus, that is actually out of focus because of the nature of the signal and you try to focus it. It's, I think that's about it for the focus there. So you can see that little dash. That little dash is marking 10.7. Well you can see the peak is over here. Where is it? I'll move I'll move the little squiggly line here just by changing the frequency of this signal generator. I'll move the squiggly line, see if we can get everything on camera. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. Okay, so as hard as it is for you to see, I'm going to move that line right to the point, of the peak here, and we'll see what frequency is really involved. So that's pretty much right on the peak now, and look, 7.5. Kind of matches what the SDR was showing. Put this back down to 10.7. Close enough. Okay, let's back back where it was. So I want to adjust the IF to bring this peak in line with the marker. Well, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to move the whole display until the marker shows up right on top of this center line. After that I'm going to rely on the center line. I'm going to move this right there. Okay, 698. I think we can even see that on the SDR. Let's look. If we can. Okay, I'm going to move the signal generator a bit. Yeah, you can definitely see that the, the, it was lined up right on 10.7, so let's put it back there. 
Now the SDR is looking at the output of the IF picked up by a small coil attached to the antenna line on the SDR. So it's not actually connected into the radio directly. Okay. I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you that. I'll try and show you that. Okay, in the radio here. So here's the SDR antenna line right here. Fighting with the focus a bit. You can see the coil is kind of shoved down inside there, inside the radio. A little hard to see. Sorry about the focus here, everyone. You can see the scope. The scope is also not directly connected. It's it's just clipped around some wire insulation between the tube there and the coil right in the corner of the radio. So and neither of these devices are directly connected. So the two things we're looking with are not directly connected. But here, here's the input from the two signal generators uh, attached to right here through a capacitor and up connected into the radio uh, pin 7 of the 12AT7 12AT7 is a 9 pin very busy tube, it's the mixer tube pin 7 is the we could call it the grid on the second section of the uh, tube and if you might notice because it's in view of the camera this resistor looks a little darkened yeah, I smoked it <laughs> I introduced a short circuit briefly uh, with a different clip lead here. Went, this is a, uh, quite a few hours ago, a few days ago. And I ended up smoking this resistor, but it's still got its, its regular value, so it's okay. That was a close call. Too bad I didn't get it on camera. It's definitely an exciting moment in my shop here when more smoke came out of the radio. But everything's okay. So, um... I'm going to uh, adjust my setup here so you can watch what I'm doing to the radio and watch the effect on the screen here at the same time. So let me, let me set that up. Okay, so something I may not have made, made clear yet is uh, the sweep generator is running here. It's producing uh, a sweep right around 10.7, uh, which you saw on the SDR. But that's outside the range of this unit. And this guy's top frequency is actually 5. So it's really sweeping from around 4.8 to 5.2, something like that, megas, megahertz. And there happens to be a harmonic, uh, double that, which is what I'm utilizing. So on this cable is really a fairly strong signal around 5 megahertz, and then a less strong signal around 10 megahertz sweeping through there. That's what's going on here. That's how I'm managing to get the... Uh, the image you see on the scope here. Um, so something has drifted somewhere a little bit because I see the 10.7 marker is now out here. It's no longer on the line. You can see the frequency is still 10.7, very close to it. Readjust what what would have drifted here? Perhaps I don't know. I don't know. To be honest with you, exactly what drifted. Let's put this. The signal generator must have drifted a bit to do this. So okay, so the 10.7 is right on the center line. Now I've got to move these, move this peak. This is just a mirror image of the peak the other half of the sine wave, I guess I could say. Now I'm going to try to move this guy over and make him as big as possible at the same time. So there's four slugs for me to work on. I'm just picking one. This is actually the second IF transformer. There we go. Okay, 
so it, it's going a little crazy on the scope there because the uh, signal from the signal the single single sing <laughs> the one frequency the 10.7 frequency here is kind of interfering with the situation so I'm gonna knock down its output here okay we'll check it later but for now that center line is 10.7 so we just keep just trying to line that up on 10.7. Not quite there. That's the bottom slug on the second. This is the bottom slug on the first. Wow, absolutely no change. I do not like it when it does that. I don't know why that would be. We'll go on the top now. Okay. Here we go. Top of the second. Didn't really move it. It just changed its uh, strength a little bit. Top of the last one. Oh, that's moving it. Stick it right on 10.7. It's going to go around and around here. Bottom of the first. seem to have any impact. Wow, that's, that's not too reassuring. Ah, turn this a long, long ways. No, it just seems to be no, no effect from it at all. Don't like that. I don't know why that would be. Let's go back to the bottom of the second IF. That's got me worried. That other slug not having any effect. There we go. Okay, ready? Here we go. That seems to be the peak. A little off 10.7. Try it back here. Let's try the bottom again. Bottom and top of the second IF. Put it right on 10.7, but the peak is not there. Let's try top of the second one again. We're not listening to the radio while I do this, and we're not looking at the SDR result while I'm doing this. We're just paying attention to the oscilloscope. The one that seems to have no bearing on anything still has no bearing. Wow, can turn this long, long ways. change. That's a huge distance. I'd move that slug. Okay, top of that one. Okay, top of the first. Wow, we get a lot more peak out of it. Way over here. What's that telling me? It's 
leave it over there for now. Try the bottom of the first again. doesn't do anything. Must be doing a little wee bit there. Yeah, it's getting bigger. Wow, it gets bigger and bigger. Let me drive this further. I think, um, you know, these were painted in place and I think I'm feeling the paint restricting the movement of the slug here. It makes me think the slug is binding, but I think it's just paint. Let's keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's a, wow. Okay, got a huge, huge improvement there. Huge improvement. Let's turn down the sensitivity. Keep going. a little funny going on there. I can see like two little peaks showing up. Fix the focus on the camera here. slug that didn't seem to have any effect was just outside of its resonant zone. I got the whole thing off to the side here. Let's let's double check the uh, so there you can see the little blip showing up. That's where 10.7 actually is over there. So we're, we're getting a much bigger peak now because I turned down the sensitivity on this. So we have a much bigger peak. Let's see if we can move it around to where we want it. This is the top of the first. Yeah, you, can, you can see the second one. You can actually see the second, I believe, the bottom of the first peak is right in here. Okay, so let me move the bottom of the first. It would be pretty bold to, to drive the slug so far. See, they're, they're, they're lining up, but they're way off in frequency. So, how come? How come I can't move those? Okay, back on the top here. Oh, that was pretty good. Bottom again. You can see something go right up and over the peak there. Okay, let's move it over again. back on the top, move it over again. Let's see what happens really when I do this. Yeah, it's moving. Move it a little bit past. Move a little bit past. Back down to the bottom. The bottom slug is a long ways now. Like it's the uh, part I'm turning only has another maybe five, six rotations. It'll disappear into the... Check that out getting closer every time. Let me back this out a bit. I 
Not not worrying about the bandwidth here. Ow, dude, it still seems to be way up here. Okay, I'm gonna leave the number one can alone for a minute and we'll fool around with the no whoop. Fool around with the number two. I bumped the SDR antenna, so I'll just take it out for now. When I used to do this with just a VTVM, it's really very straightforward. Now we'll go back to the first one again. First IF transformer. There we go. Getting this rate on 10.7 is important for getting the dial in the right place assuming everything else in the radio is good. You see the peak is pretty close. I can see something right in here. Let's see if we can move that thing. Even if I do get this maxed out, but not dead on the 10.7 mark, the worst it does is throw the front dial off. Okay, so I'm going to the second transformer again. Kind of tell that's a bit of a flat top there. See if I can. I got a funny bump out here too. What's that? Let me keep my eye on that. So I'm watching this this area out here now. the second. We'll go back to the bottom of the first. Really wants to be there. Let's double check the location of the 10.7 again. See, it's just out here. So we're quite a ways off 10.7. How, how far off? Let's measure it. I'll move the other signal generator back to where the peak is now. I'll move it right about there. So we're at 10.6, not 10.7. That's 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 a long ways. That's a long ways to be off. And then figure out what that what that bright spot is there. It's this light up here. Yes, it is. It's a ceiling light in the back of my shop. Okay, so we'll turn down the, that signal generator and get it out of the picture. So I really do want to move this guy over. Okay, everybody, pay attention to moving over. I'm talking to the transformers here. 10.6. 
attention to transformers. Your job is to move to the right. Everybody move to the right. Okay, and that's the bottom of the first. This is the top of the first. Actually, we got to go a little further, don't we? It'll be more over here. Bottom of the first again. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. He really wants to. He really wants to be over here. Second IF transformer. Oh, that, oh, that's interesting. I got a bit of a peak happening right in the right spot. Perfect. Let's go top of the second. Let's go top of the first. First, bottom of the first is driven in a long ways. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's listen to the radio. What does it sound like? That's kind of what it should sound like. Buzz. Now, to tune the radio and listen to it. Oh, first let's take a look at the uh, SDR. The SDR. I have to stop here and bring the SDR up and take a look at it. Okay, so now we're looking at the SDR and the scope at the same time. The SDR is showing nothing because the antenna is out of the radio. So I'll position the antenna here where it's going to pick up something. Oh, didn't that knock the radio off? So I'm just sticking the antenna coil, the pickup coil for the SDR into the back of the radio here and getting a surprising effect depending upon where I put it. Sliding it in. I'd put this on camera if I could, but I can't because I can't have all the cameras going while I'm doing this. Okay, so I don't really want this antenna to be affecting the radio. But, you know, you, it's pretty tricky to absorb something from the radio and not affect it at the same time. So to me like that's about the best spot for it. So what's that telling us? Okay, so the red line on the SDR is 10.7. You can see that that peak point is a little to the left of 10.7. It's a little off. Let's kind of continue uh, aligning the radio, watching the SDR here for a minute start with the uh, bottom of the first. This is the, the insensitive slug. Okay, so on the SDR the, the peak is at 10.7. Let's see if we can make it any bigger. the bottom of the second. And we'll go top of the second. I'm not really following any particular order here. Top of the second. Just got to get my tool to engage here. There we go. Okay. We'll turn top of the second. 
SDR has a delay on it. And looking back at the scope again. This is easier to do with the scope. Okay, that's the top of the second. We're right on 10.7 now, according to the SDR. Top of the first. This usually has a pretty good effect. Let's see. Okay, watching the SDR. Really moves it. needs a fairly large bandwidth. Uh, this one is only a mono FM. So receiving mono FM, it doesn't need nearly the big bandwidth. Now looking at the, uh, the uh, scope again, and I'll bring up the marker frequency. Oh my gosh, it's way over here. What happened? I left it. Okay, so we'll I'll move the marker right on top of the right there. And we're at ten point seven oh one. It kind of throws the display cockeyed when it's right on top, but I'll just reduce it. So that's it. So there we've got it. Now, interesting that this wide area is showing up out here. I thought it was over here. How did that happen? When, when did that move? Is there any significance to that anyway? You don't see anything like that on the SDR. Or do I? Maybe I do. If you look at the uh, SDR, you see the peak curve here. And then we see this roll-off out here. On the other side, we don't see the roll-off. There's a chop-off. This is the edge of the uh, sweep signal way out here. Well, I'd say that that's... I've got the IF tuned right on 10.7. I've got it peaked as much as I can get it. I'd say it's time to listen to the radio. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll disconnect the signal generator inputs here. Yeah, signal generators are powerful enough that just having them working here in my shop is enough to put signals into the radio. So I'm going to I want to leave the instruments set as they were. I can still hear it. Well, okay. Turn this off. There. Get rid of that completely. So, unfortunately, that means our scope is showing just a big dot. But that's okay. Let's listen to the radio now. It's connected to uh, this uh, regular 300 ohm folded dipole. SDR display again. We're looking at the end of the IF uh, transformer stages, I guess we could say. We'll turn up the radio and we'll tune it.
I'd say when I tune in signal, again, because of the delay on the SDR, it's a little tricky to do this. But I think the strongest sound is about there, a little off 10.7. You turn up the volume. Okay, let's go find a louder signal. Nine times in eight years. No matter where we've been or where we've lived, Pastor Chuck has always been on the radio. And the broadcast has always been timed just so that I can listen. That's me tuning it back and forth. To touch my mic and minister to me in so many ways. I'm eternally thankful for this ministry. Thank you, Pastor Chuck, for staying the course and remaining faithful to now, your calling. Now, I'm listening very carefully to it. The sound is very good now. Whenever I hear a personal the story peak is in like this, this area. one, I'm reminded of God's never-ending faithfulness. The sound is very, very good. Let's see if we can find another strong station, just tuning it down. This is, uh, see, it got kind of quiet. I, the uh, atmospheric sound, or the hiss anyway, seems to have just disappeared. sure if I uh... so um, that's full blast volume Charlie in this hour a horrific case of child abuse parents convicted of extreme now I think the SDR antenna is interfering let me move the antenna took it right out why are you defending the father so I'm tuning through this station. There's no happy spot for that station. Uh, when it's loudest, it's also a little bit distorted. I'm putting in the SDR antenna again. Let me uh, wait a minute, let me do this right. <coughs> One of these is going to give me a copyright hit. Hey, what happens if I have multiple pieces of music on my video? Who gets to uh, take it over? That's how it works. If I put copyrighted material, the copyright holder can take over my video. It still gets published. Everybody gets to watch it. 639. Work online to insightforliving.ca. What I just Join did, us again Wednesday when Chuck's window. What I did there is I just pulled the uh, SDR antenna out to watch if the signal moved. I'll put it back in. Just, just watch and see as the signal comes up if it moves to the left or right. A growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Now here's today's edition of In Touch with Charles Stanley. Colson Heating and Air Conditioning invites I'd say you no. to listen to In Touch. So what that thing is that's showing up at ten point nine? I don't know. What that their is. Customers across Simcoe County using today's technology with yesterday's values of hard work and honesty. Owners 
Jeff and Janice Coulson built okay. their business with their Christian That's, faith uh, as the foundation and their customers as their yeah, These funny shapes in the SDR, I don't know what to make of them. Or heating to gas or propane, or are in need of a new but that clearly is the IF repair. Fantastic. Okay, let's... You the best service. To learn more, visit ColsonHeating.com. Hi, I'm Rick Buck, lead pastor of the Manual Barry. Okay, I think that's it for uh, for the IF alignment. I think I got it right. Now, what's the story here? The, the, the story is I've done as much as I can relying on the SDR first time around. Didn't seem to get me home to where I really needed to be. Um, can't be sure about the IF because between the time I aligned it using the SDR and the time I've aligned it now, I have fiddled with this radio a lot, including monkeying with the IF coil adjustments. So unfortunately I can't absolutely say that the SDR missed the boat. I, I don't think it did actually in the end. Not for doing the IF. The place where I missed the boat here in doing the alignment, the two places, is the uh, uh, adjusting the uh, discriminator coil and also the front end alignment. I think these two things are probably not correct but we're going to continue to work in a classic fashion try to compare what's happening you know on the oscilloscope with what's happening on the SDR and, and really try to get down to this answer this basic question I have can I align an a, a FM and radio uh, FM radio just using a, a, the SDR AM seems to be true but the AM alignment is very simple and is at a much lower frequency just uh, half a million Hertz whereas we're up at 10 million Hertz when we're trying to do uh, the uh, IF inside one of these uh, FM radios. Okay, but I, th I think that's pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Thanks so much for watching.